Hello. For today module, I'll be focusing on estimating activity duration. Since this class is focused on uh, project initiation and planning, and not focusing on construction cost estimation, I'm going to highlight main components that a planner has to think about in his team whenever there is an estimator, of course, with him on what items I want to look at, the basics, the foundations, when I deal with estimating any kind of construction activity or task duration. I would love to highlight here five points that activity duration that largely determined by. And we'll go one by one with some examples. The first one, the nature of the work that the activity entails. What we mean by that is if all factors are equal, to pour a concrete in the 20th or 18th or 17th floor in my building will take longer than pouring the concrete to the third floor. So this is what we mean by the nature of the work. Second, the quantity of the work. An example, activity with, let's say, 8,000 square meter or square feet of form work to be placed in my project will take longer than a 4,000 square feet. In matter of fact, all things the same and all factors equal, it will take double the time of placing a 4,000 square feet or square meter of a form work. So this is what we talk about the quantity. Third, the technique or the construction methodology that is used in that activity. So let's take an example. Concrete pouring will take longer with using a crane and buggies than using a concrete pump. So the construction technique needs to be addressed when you look at estimating that activity. And of course, you want to look at the cost. You want to look at what's available for you from a time perspective and so on, on what construction technique that you want to use in that activity or task. Number four is the resources used to perform the work. For example, 20 masons are most likely will finish the same amount of work that a 15 masons or 12 masons do. So this is, this is one. Uh, another example of the resources used uh, would be a, a larger fleet of scrappers will finish an earth moving operation faster than a smaller one or smaller team. The last one I want to highlight is the working hours for the resources. Uh, for example, an activity or construction task will be finished earlier if it used 10 hours shift per day instead of just eight hours shift per day. So one main approach or a method to estimate an activity duration is actually to look at the historical records of that particular construction activity or task and come up with a kind of the average duration from past experiences and then make the final estimate. Moreover, you want to uh, put into consideration that since the, the, the scope of the construction activity is unlikely to be identical between different projects, especially in our industry. In this case, uh, unit productivity rates uh, are typically used to overcome this kind of challenge. And we will go through an example uh, in, in the following slide. So 
in, in some up, the activity duration is often estimated based on the experience and the judgment and the quantity of work or the crew daily output from historical records. And here in North America, we use the RS means a lot in, in, such, in such tasks. Um, and uh, uh, RS means it's actually the North America's leading supplier of construction cost information um, that will help us in the estimations also on the duration. So RS means get us information such as the daily output for a specific crew for a specific construction activity or task. And once we have this daily output and knowing what's the quantity of work to be performed in that specific task, then the activity duration per days will be able to figure it out. So let's take an example here. Let's estimate a construction activity duration of 6,000 square feet. In, in, in the US, we, we're using a lot of square feet, of course, but you can, for simplicity, have a square meter if you're using the meter uh, in, 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 your, in your projects. So you want to estimate that activity for a formwork of continuous wall footing. So let's assume we have two crews that working in that specific construction activity or task. And we can use, it says, each plywood section up to three times. So the way we will look at it or how to solve this as I explained to you in the previous slide, we have the equation of the activity duration. That's what we want to find. And we know the quantity of work, which is the 6,000 square feet. So we go to the RS means to find for a continuous wall footing, a placing the form work and using each plywood three times we find out that there is 470 square feet per day per one crew for the three uses of the plywood section. So if I know the 470 output rate and the quantity of work I have is 6,000 and the daily output was 470, so we will divide the quantity over the output rate from the RS means we found, and we will get around 13 days because we have two crews, not one crew, and the 470 only for one crew, then we divide the total duration by two crews to know exactly that we have seven days approximately to finish this construction activity. So this is our estimate. In a practice, if you remember, I told you to focus also in the experience and the judgment by a good planner and a good estimator. So in a practice, for sure, you would need to check your estimates by a superintendent or an experienced estimator that works with the a planning team instead of just depending on the mathematical analysis or the equations that we just showed here. Also, just something to think about having the number seven here. Working days is different than calendar days. So five working days equal one week in a calendar day from Monday to Friday. Some countries have them maybe from Sunday until uh, uh, Thursday. So that's the things from a judgment and common sense to consider when you do these estimations for your duration of any construction task or activity.